المتحدث الرئيس معالي البروفيسور عيسى علي بنتامي وزير الاتصالات والاقتصاد الرقمي جمهورية نيجيريا الاتحادية نرحب بك المتحدث الرئيس معالي البروفيسور عيسى علي بنتامي وزير الاتصالات والاقتصاد الرقمي جمهورية نيجيريا الاتحادية نرحب بك والمتحدث معنا أيضا سعادة السيد جراهام بود مدير معهد فاراداي للعلوم والدين بالمملكة المتحدة والمتخصص في الهندسة المتحدث الثالث سعادة السيد الدكتور عبد, عبد الإله بن عرفة نائب المدير العام للإسيسكو بالمملكة المغربية ومعنا أيضا فضيلة الدكتور زكي الميلاد مفكر وكاتب سعودي متخصص في الدراسات الإسلامية ويترأس تحرير مجلة الكلمة بالنيابة عنكم جميعا اسمحوا لي بأن نبدأ إذا جلستنا فليكن لكل مشارك عشر دقائق لاستعراض فكرته على أن نفتح في نهاية المداخلات باب الحوار فلتتفضل معالي البروفيسور عيسى علي بن تامي مشكورا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستكفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل لا ومن يدلل فلا هادي له Permit me to begin by conveying the greetings of uh, the government and good people of Nigeria to all of you. And uh, secondly, on behalf of the government of Nigeria, I want to use the opportunity to appreciate and commend the President of the United Arab Emirates and also the leader for the Abu Dhabi Forum for Peace, Sheikh Abdullah Bunubaya, and uh, the President of this country, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed Bunu Zaid Al Nahyan, for being consistent in organizing this peace forum for nine consecutive years. Their effort is highly commendable. دعوني أتحدث باللغة الإنجليزية لأن المتناقشين يفهمون اللغة الإنجليزية أفضل من اللغة العربية. And uh, secondly, I also want to use the opportunity to commend the speakers and the participants for creating time out of no time to be here physically for this very important conference. The topic that we are requested to discuss today is more of a cultural security and digital transformation under the main theme that is globalized conflict and universal peace demands and partnership. The theme and the sub-theme are very apt, particularly looking at the quality of uh, the discussions here with us, I believe they will do justice in discussing the topic. In addition, the topic has two components. Component number one is cultural security. Number two is digital transformation. I will just make an attempt to explain both of them and at the end make an attempt to reconcile and also to offer some recommendations. On the first one, cultural security, there are so many definitions of what cultural security is all about. But in summary, we can say cultural security is a philosophy and also a way of operating in which people's culture are respected. In summary, we can say it is an attempt to ensure that cultural identity is protected. If you read the glorious Quran, you will discover that in so many places, in so many verses, 
Allah draws our attention to the importance of preserving our culture that is not harmful to our societies and our communities. From the way Allah Ta'ala has created all of us, you will discover there is a form of preserving our culture. For example, in Surah Al-Hujirat, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nasu, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum, Surah Al-Hujirat, verse 13. In this verse, Allah has vindicated to us that he has created us with different tribes, different nations, not because one part of the world is better than the other, but rather at least to appreciate the beauty of our diversity. And at the same time, if you look at what happened with regards to some form of ibadat like during pilgrimage or laser hatch, where people partake in walking between Safa and Marwa. It is part of our culture or part of the culture of our forefathers that was preserved by Islam. Inna Safa wal marwata min sha'airillah fa man hajja al bayta aw i'tamara fa la junaha alayhi ayyat tawafa bihima fa man tatawwa khayran fa inna Allah shakirun alim surah al-Baqarah verse 158. People used to partake in walking between Safa and Marwa. When Islam comes, Allah has validated their action that they used to practice before the emergence or the coming of Islam. This is to show to us that Islam is not against our culture, what particularly culture that is not harmful to humanity. And it is the same if you look at what Allah Ta'ala has made lawful for us in the Qur'an, the Qur'an is silent about what we eat as part of our culture as long as that is not part of unlawful or illegitimate. The Qur'an says, Ya ayyuhal nas, kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba, wa la tattabi'u khutwati shaytan, innahu lakum aduwu mubin, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 168. Meaning that we are allowed to eat what is lawful in our culture as long as it's not harmful to us or it's not harmful to humanity. That is why when it comes to eating and drinking, you are not in any way required to present the justification for legitimacy or lawful. But it is whoever disagrees with you that is being challenged to convince that this is not lawful or it is not legitimate to eat or to drink. Why? Because generally people are allowed to practice their culture as long as their culture is not in any way harmful to them or harmful to their communities or to humanity. That aside, if you look at the second part of the topic is digital transformation. Digital transformation is all about the deployment of digital technologies either to create a new or to convert an existing system, whether it is part of our economic development or social life or education or health. For example, this screen we have is part of digital transformation. What we do here is being recorded is part of digital transformation. Sometimes we present lectures and people follow online is part of digital transformation. And with the digital transformation taking place today, we will strongly believe that it is the most important part of the fourth industrial revolution. As we all know, we have our physical world. We also have our biological world. And now as part of the fourth industrial revolution, another world has been created. That is our digital world or our virtual world. Particularly through disruptive technologies or emerging technologies like 5G, Internet of Things, robotics, quantum computing, cloud computing, autonomous vehicle, augmented reality, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, biotechnology, and many more. So these are the digital technologies that brought about digital transformation where another world has been created beside our physical world on one hand 
and biological wall on the other, that is the virtual or the digital wall. And today, what is sometimes highly worrisome, we know the virtual wall more than the way and manner we know and understand our physical wall. Something could happen in your neighborhood. You could not be able to know it, but if it is online, in any part of the world it happens, you will come to know it better. So this is to show to us that today we know the virtual world more than the physical world. My final word here is how can we ac accept digital transformation without in any way compromising our good culture and custom? Firstly, what we need to do is to try and advocate that whatever is legal, legitimate, and ethical offline, it is the same legal, legitimate, and ethical online. Whatever is illegal, illegitimate, and unethical offline, then it should be illegal, illegitimate, and unethical online. And secondly, there is need for creating platforms where we can promote our culture, particularly to our younger ones, cultures that are not in any way harmful to humanity. And number three, we must try to promote tolerance and coexistence where we will live in peace in respect of our culture. And even if someone's culture disagrees with your own, you should at least try to show a level of tolerance so that we can live peacefully. These are the few things that I think are very important. Thank you very much for listening.